Hey, what's up y'all? Talent Scout coming at you with another video. I'm your host, Terrence Godfrey, and today we're talking about some more economic stuff. And man, I really don't like this one. I'm kind of afraid. Okay, so back in March, that's when we had the worst day in the stock market ever since the 80s. Like we hit Great Depression levels, unemployment, you know, all that, all that crazy stuff. I was joking with some of my buddies, like, well, you know, we got out of the Great Depression last time, you know, we just started World War II. It's like, that's a great way to get the economy started. You know, you start a good old war, it really gets the industries moving, jobs created, and yay, economy, prosperity. Obviously, I was joking, but um, as of today, March 27th, 2020, Hong Kong has lost its status as an autonomous region. So let's talk about Hong Kong a little bit. So Hong Kong, you know, was part of China way back when. It wasn't really special at all. It could have been a good trading port, but at the time, didn't really matter. We're talking like way, way back, like uh, over 100 years ago. So then China leased out Hong Kong to Britain for 99 years. And in that 100 year time, uh, Hong Kong, it was popping. It became Asia's financial hub, one of the most important trading cities on the planet. And just there's just so much money in Hong Kong. Uh, eventually there was a little scuffle. Britain didn't want to give it back even though they signed it. They figured it out. Hong Kong went back to China, but as an autonomous region. So it was still part of China, but had a more capitalist, business-friendly environment when compared to mainland China. And Hong Kong has been a great trading partner of the United States for a very, very long time. But now that they're no longer an autonomous region, they don't get the same privileges and the U.S. just doesn't really trust them as much because China has been going in, trying to take away more rights from the people of Hong Kong, trying to reintegrate them deeper into the into the Chinese Communist Party and under that leadership. And yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big deal. Why does it matter? Uh, well, if you haven't been noticing, the U.S. and China have kind of been at each other's throats through our last president's term. Um, you know, wanting to put more taxes on China, wanting to bring back manufacturing jobs back to the US. I used to be under the ideology, like if you keep the jobs over there, the consumers on this side, they'll benefit because, you know, labor's cheaper over in China, so manufacturing costs are less, therefore our products are less. You manufacture an iPhone in the United States, it'll cost a lot more. But I, I get what the Trump lump was saying about we're relying too much on them for our manufacturing of goods. And like, I, I get it. But another thing that I noticed today, apparently Chinese diplomats were trying to work with India saying we should let go of our differences and we should really align together. Now that's crazy because that was also today. Why that's such a big deal to me is like, well, China and India, they've been rivals for more affordable labor for a while now. And that's kind of weird because they haven't been the best of friends. They don't really like each other that much. That's a big reason why China is so big on making sure they keep control of Tibet because that's the only barrier between the rest of China and India. If they don't have Tibet, there's an easy way to just go through China and take away their land. So that's just really strange. It's like, okay, they're not best friends, but they're actually trying to align with each other. The US and China have been severing, well, not really severing, but definitely loosening their ties to one another. It really looks like they're preparing for the worst because the world economy's been hit and I don't know, history shows that one of the best ways to jumpstart an economy is with a conflict. So, man, this is this is weird. So I'm not sure if you guys also know, but about a month or so ago, China was really trying to point the origin of the coronavirus onto US soldiers and then also to people over in Africa to make sure that the blame wasn't censored in the Wuhan region. They wanted to point like, no, no, it was Africa. No, 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 it's the United States. And they really doubled down on it was the US. Before I didn't and still don't like how Trump was calling it the Chinese virus because that brought out of like a lot of racism. People were attacking people of Asian descent that had no affiliation and like no person. Like it's not, it's not like a specific group of people just like you have it. Like that's just not how viruses work. Like anyone can get it. So calling it the Chinese virus, I was like, well, that's kind of weird. But then it, what really got me is within a couple of weeks, that's when China started pointing the fingers at other regions in the world. I'm like, oh, like I get it. I still don't think it's okay because of the racism and like the attacks that happened after the fact, but I get it. Like he was saying, it's like, I'm calling it the Chinese virus because that's where it started. So. Racism, never okay, not cool with that. 
but I get it because the Chinese Communist Party, they have a very checkered history of um, alternative facts and bending the truth and blaming others. And I, I get why he did it, but I still don't think it's good. You know what I mean? And yeah, so this is, this is really weird, y'all. Please drop your thoughts below. I'd love to hear what you're thinking about this. Do you think I'm just maybe overreacting? Uh, do you think this is actually a possibility? Uh, yeah, be sure to like, subscribe, share. Yeah, this is, um, this one's really getting me. Oh, but in other news, that's more positive. Elon's sending people into space later this afternoon, so uh, that's pretty neat. All right, y'all, later.